Right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this live stream uh, put on for you by Duff TV. My name is Casimir Douglas, and I will be your commentator for this game today. And what a game it is. We have St. Patrick's College up against Guildford Young College in the 2021 Sartus Soccer Boys Final. Indeed, this contest of St. Patrick's College versus Guildford Young College has accounted for six of the last nine state finals with Guildford Young College uh, coming up successful in the majority of those games. Indeed, Guildford Young College have won five of the last six state finals. The most recent state final played here at St Patrick's College, which is our venue today, was in 2017, which again was contested by St Patrick's College and Guildford Young College. And after an entertaining tussle, ended in a penalty shootout in which St Patrick's College were victorious. So 2017 being the last time St Patrick's College were able to lift the trophy. And subsequently, Guildford Young College have dominated the boys' football scene in Sartus, winning the last three championships in a row. Interestingly, the last team to win three championships in a row uh, for the Sardis Boys Soccer was St Patrick's College, who did so between 2011 and 2013. And the coach of the St Patrick's Boys team at the time was none other than myself, Casimir Douglas, your commentary for today's action. So, we're at St Patrick's College. The venue is just near our Co-Patrick campus, which is our Year 9 campus. And it is an outstanding day for football. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology tells me that it's just on 19 degrees, so a nice warm day for the boys. There is a bit of a breeze blowing towards the Mount Leslie Road end, which will probably be just enough for the decision come kickoff time uh, for the team who gets to have the kickoff to head in that direction. Um, having coached and played on this ground many times, um, there are a few better footballing grounds in all of Tasmania. The work that the groundsmen at St Patrick's College have done with this surface not just to prepare it for this occasion, but over the, the last 10 years um, has been exceptional. Um, when you think of the great grounds in the state, you think of Valley Road and KG5 down in Hobart, but this surface here at St Patrick's College puts them to shame. So with the perfect weather conditions, they are ideal conditions for football, and we should see an entertaining contest between two young, hungry and talented teams who have dominated the competition in the north and in the south. We are nearing kickoff, which will be in about four minutes' time. And just preceding kickoff, we will have a minute's silence for uh, Liam Monigal, who had a significant role in the life of both schools. And during that uh, minute's silence, I'll be reading some information about Liam Monigal uh, for you, the viewers of this live stream, so that you know a little bit more about who he was and why he's being celebrated and acknowledged by these two teams. In a moment, I'll go through the lineups for both teams and the players that they have in their squads. So we'll start with the, the home side, who is St. Patrick's College. And on their team today, they have uh, Oscar Sharapow in goals, wearing the number one. We have Jack Woodland, who is number two, centre of your screen there. Uh, Adam Bevis, uh, number five, who coached Des Shipper, who's just fixing up his headband. Very important to get the hair out of the way. Don't want anything obscuring the vision during the game. Uh, Alex Vogelar is number seven. Uh, Arpen Ray, number eight. Steph Tantari, number nine. Toby Simeone wearing the number 10. We have Tito Brown who is wearing the number 12. Uh, Max Reisig in number 14. Tom O'Byrne who's wearing the number 15 jersey today. Will Milner number 16. Reed Beckett number 18. Campbell Young number 19. Riley Fellows number 21 and Lachlan Norton wearing the number 22. Interestingly for St Patrick's College just about 10 of the names that I just read out play together for Launceston United. And so uh, they're in their um, championship competition, so they know each other well. We then have Guildford Young. So they are led out there by number one, Austin Yost, who is their co-captain with Sam Berezanski, number two. And number three is Tay Evans, who is their vice-captain, who we expect to start at centre-back today. We have Ken Conn in number four. Uh, Nelson Quine in number five, the other centre-back. We have Jed Schultz, who I understand will start on the bench. Uh, Harry Hughesloot, which is the name that I'm familiar with from uh, the NPL as well. The surname is starting in centre defensive midfield. We have Josh Jones, uh, number eight. Matthias Collins in number nine. Callum Ellis in the right wing as we begin our minute's silence. 
So this minute science is again for Liam Monigal. So St Patrick's College obviously welcome Guildford Young College to the Prospect Campus for our 2021 Sardis final, what should be a high quality game of football. We're having this minute silence because each of these schools has a strong link with the late Liam Monigal, a former teacher and coach at St Patrick's College, a highly credentialed champion and great player with Georgetown and Launceston Juventus. Many staff at St Patrick's College were close friends and colleagues of Liam and his wife Cathy. From Guildford Young College, Marco Gazzoni has connections with Liam that started in the playing days in Georgetown and as friends and rivals as coaches in Launceston, when in SPC and also for Launceston Church Grammar. So a wonderful show of respect for both teams and a celebration of the life of Liam Monigal. You see our officials here greeting the captains for the toss of the coin. Uh, our centre official today and the man uh, taking charge is Matthew Owens. You can see centre of the screen there. And we also have Sam Day, who is standing to the left-hand side of the screen there, and Craig Owen on the right-hand side, who are our sideline officials. Both sides will be looking to start fast today, and hoping to win this coin toss will help them with the wind that is blowing down towards the main campus here at St Patrick's College. And Guildford Young have won the coin toss. And it looks as though we're going to stay as we are, both sides. So Guildford Young have gone with the wind, which is blowing from left to right for your screens at home or on your mobile device, wherever you're watching this stream live, courtesy of Duff TV, of this 2021 Sardis Boys Soccer Final. Both teams retreat into their huddles for a few final words of wisdom from their captains. They will have been looking forward to this day for a number of weeks since finalising their participation in this match through winning their northern and southern competitions respectively. <laughs> Coaches Marco Gerzoni of Guildford Young College and Des Shipper of St Patrick's College will have done a lot of work with their teams in the lead up to this occasion. <laughs> and we'll see how their in-game management affects the result today. Des Shipper himself, a credentialed football player, played with Northern Rangers for many years here in Launceston, uh, one of the best players in the state in his day, a very rugged uh, midfielder, uh, laid in a hard tackle, I can confirm that myself, um, but also very skillful, and recently was instrumental in helping the staff team here at St Patrick's College defeat this group of boys that are in front of you. So they have to play better than that if they're going to win today. And we're away, 40 minutes for each half. And an eager start for St Patrick's College there uh, finds the sideline very quickly. Lockie Norton contesting the header there and a bit of time and space now for Guildford Young in the midfield. Guildford Young have a sport with riches in their squad list with a large number of players also participating in uh, the NPL which is the state's premier uh, footballing division. This includes Austin Yost, who is the, the co-captain and playing in the centre of midfield today. Throw in there, coming in from Lockie Norton, finds Steph Tantari, who's bounced around a few clubs in the north of the state here, having spent some time at Launceston City, Devonport Strikers, and also now Launceston United, where he plays in the championship level. Cross comes in and is cleared by the keeper. Devonport with a chance for some composure. Lockie's going to wind up for a shot. No passes, decides to keep possession. But it's an errant pass and a chance for Guildford Young to hit on the counter. And that flag has gone up for offside on the near side here from official Craig Owen, who has adjudged the Guildford Young player there to have been in an offside position, coming back from an offside position when he received that ball. Ball has played long there from Adam Bevis, who is the captain of the St Patrick's College team. And we're in the number five today. He also spends his time at Launceston United. Indeed, Craig Owens, who raised the 
offside flag before is the father of Matthias Owens, who is participating in today's game for Guildford Young College as well. Is Guildford maintaining possession as they work their way across the back line? Nice touch to keep the ball in possession. Some good, some good footwork there as Guildford continue their search forward. The pass is in behind, but um, was not strong enough to hold on to it. Steph Tantari comes away through the midfield, plays the through ball there. He's looking for Toby Simeone. And Toby has possession. Can he find enough space to shoot? Takes his time, decides to keep possession, plays it back to Lockie Norton, who looks to be playing in the left-back position today. Doesn't get all of that pass, though, and it is uh, picked up there easily by Ken Conn. As Guildford look to play the ball out of their defence. Really looking to get the ball into the feet of their strikers this afternoon, Guildford Young early. The flag has gone up there, and it is adjudged that the ball has gone out by Josh Divin, who's playing striker today, as Con comes over to take the throw, who again looks for Divin. Managed to hold the ball up this time. That one's out off Ed Adam Bevis. My apologies, that was Sam Berezanski, the co-captain, who got the ball at his feet there. Another great throw there from Con. A chance for Guilford here in this attacking position. The number seven there, Callum Ellis, gets the ball across. And there's some time in the box here. Can you get a shot off? Oh, brilliant defending there. That was Alex Vogelaar for St. Patrick's College hitting the deck there. See, a wonderful ball here from Callum Ellis. Finds himself with some space. No one shutting him down. They really gave him too much time and space there, St. Patrick's College. Just couldn't quite bring the ball down there, the captain, Sam Berezanski. Um... Got away from him a little bit, had to rush the shot, and that was enough time for Alex Vogelaar to hit the deck. And a strong header ball win there, but only finds it out of bounds. Lockie Norton wanders over to take the throw in. And throwing there from Lockie Norton, looking for Steph Tantari. Finds it all the way down there to Riley Fellows, who managed to get his in. The flag is down. It's a chance to score here for Steph Tantari. And excellent defence there for Guilford Young. Another opportunity for Tantari to whip one in. And he's gone to the back post here. Too far for anyone. It's cleared by Guilford there. Uh, winning the hitter. The header, rather, was Anthony Mamick. As Guilford looked again to hit on the counter. Ball in there to Callum Ellis. Plays a nice one too. Thomas Post in the wing. Alex Vogelaar overcommits there in the tackle. Referee is judge the foul. Yellow card. The slice of cheese stays in his pocket for now. But Coach Des Shipper were wanting to see Alex there. Perhaps exercise a little more calm and caution. And to not dive in, particularly with Guildford and the riches they have going forward. To avoid... Oh, plenty of time there. Really great use of the feet. Unable to get past Alex Vogelaar there, who defends well and stays on his feet this time. But Guilford retained possession and a nice touch to work his way through the midfield here. And the shot uh, blocked by one of his own teammates. It's a battle for the ball outside the box. Number 20 there for Guilford Young College. Ken Conn. Unable to strip the ball away from Riley Fellows, who plays the ball down the wing. Looking, searching for an opening. The ball has stayed in. The flag's not gone up. Fell down there, wasn't able to protect the ball, and he's managed to steal the ball there, Toby Simeone. It's come out to Steph Tantari. The ball sat up for a bubble, and that one has gone over the building works and has ricocheted into the aquaculture centre and is most definitely out for a goal kick. He'll be kicking himself there. Didn't manage to get over it, and skyrocketed over the bar and did not trouble the keeper, Josh Jones. So as mentioned before, there's been there's a number of players on this Guildford Young side who uh, represent clubs in Hobart at the highest level for MPL. 
which includes uh, Austin Yates, the co-captain, who plays at Glenorchy Knights, Sam Berezanski, the other co-captain at South Hobart, and Tay Evans, the vice-captain, applies his trade in the championship for South Hobart as well. As St. Patrick try to get something going here, Steph Tantari having an early impact on the game. If he's given and afforded the time and space that he needs, um, he can be very dangerous. Battling hard in there was Max Reisig, unable to win the ball. And he's got his hands full so far today, does Alex Vogelaar. He's pushed off the ball, trying to find some time and space here to shoot. It was Josh Divin. And the ball's come back. Chance for a shot. Oh, cleared. St. Patrick's College, some very rugged defending there. A couple of really open opportunities right in front of the goalkeeper in the six-yard box here in the first half for Guildford Young College, who have most certainly created the better chances in through these first ten minutes. So here comes the cross, cut it back beautifully there, um, but unable to find the back of the net or away through the defence of St Patrick's College, and the keeper on that occasion was not required to react. Number 21 for Guildford Young College, wandering over to take the corner there, is Austin Yost, one of the co-captains. Signals that he's going long. It's a great ball into the box and the header. Oh, just skimmed across the front of the head there. It's gone out for a goal kick. But there was a brilliant chance there. See, the ball floated in beautifully on the edge of the six-yard box. Could argue that the keeper could have come to that. And it looks like that was number 10, uh, Sam Berezanski, one co-captain to another, who was just not able to get his head through the ball and trouble the keeper. And Oscar Sharapau does not concede a goal on that occasion. Has the opportunity for the goal kick and can only find the sideline. Oscar himself plays for Launceston United in the championship division here in the north of the state. The throw comes in and is cleared there by St. Patrick's College captain Adam Bevis. Manages to find Toby Simeone there who himself has looked dangerous. Managed to float a ball over the top. Looking for Riley Fellows, who has to get through a few tackles. Ball comes to Steph Tantari and again fires over the bar. If Steph cannot find his range in shooting, then the labourers over the fence there are going to get sick of throwing the ball back to him. As it does come back now for Guildford Young. To take their goal kick. So the kick being taken by keeper Josh Jones, but only as far as the edge of the box, is able to keep it in and needs to disposal this time out to the left wing. Chipping it forward, looking for his captain in Austin Yost. Oh, it does well under pressure there, does Tay Evans to keep the ball in possession and shrug off the tackle from the defender. Anthony Mamick managed to find his way through. He's had plenty of the ball so far today. Austin Yost has been pivotal in that midfield role. And looks to switch it. Oh, and it's come through. Not able to control it. It was Lockie Norton and Callum Ellis, who's caused some difficulties for the college. Great ball in. Oh, doesn't manage to fire it on goals, though. Another tremendous ball in from Callum Ellis. He was giving them nightmares down the right hand side and again another ball in. St. Patrick's College able to handle it. The ball is cleared away. It looks like Guilford Young might have actually won that header. Here's the replay. The ball comes across from the captain there, Sam Berezanski. And there was an opportunity there, a clear header. One by Guilford Young. In fact, there were two Guilford Young players competing for that same ball. A St. Patrick's College there, defender not in sight. And very lucky to get away with that one as they've had now three brilliant chances in that six-yard area, not yet able to convert. The ball goes out. It'll be a St. Patrick's College throw-in, taken by Lockie Norton. Lockie Norton himself plays for Launceston United here in the Northern Championship. And he's come through now, Toby Simeone, a chance to charge in towards the box, but the defending is good enough to hold him at bay for now. Just managed to get a foot in there. Did Tay Evans. 
But St. Patrick's holding on to the ball. Lockie's got the ball again. Can they find a way through? Some desperate defending from Guildford. And the ball's away. Adam Bevis not able to control that one. And Guildford will have another throw. Marco Gazzoni will be happy with the start that his side has made today. Having created some really beautiful clear-cut chances, but not yet able to convert. St. Patrick's College's chance on the counter again, but there he is again. Yost has been pivotal in that centre of midfield. But giving it away easily here, he's ball into the box, but it only goes straight back to the keeper there from Riley Fellow. He's not able to conjure something more for his teammates. Great pass out of the fence there to Berezanski. Chipping it up the wing. Previously, Callum Ellis has been flying down that wing, but on this occasion, was looking for Josh Divin. This is where they've been able to do their best work so far, Guildford Young College. On the wing, looking to get the ball into the middle. A nice one too there. The ball is still with Con. Gets it into the feet of Josh Divin. He'll try to shot on his left. Ball's come out to Callum Ellis. And it has been judged a corner ball. An opportunity now for Austin to put the ball back into the box. Chance for Guilford to take the lead. Second corner of the game for Guilford Young College. Another chance for a header there. No one could get on it and it's cleared by Riley Fellows. Only as far as Con, who heads it back into the danger area. Bevis for St. Patrick's College trying to clear. Falls to the feet of Berezanski. Max Rysik does enough to take it away from him. Some nice play there between Toby and Steph Tantari. But Guilford back in possession again. It's been stripped. Max Rysik's taking it away from him. Riley Fellows oh, looking to play the ball in for Max Rysik there. Just too much on it on that occasion. And Josh Jones out quick to collect that one. And start his team working up the field again. A few errant passes there in the midfield. Both coaches will be looking for them to settle, find the feet of their teammates. As the ball comes to Callum Ellis, what can he create? Now with Berezanski. Oh, and the ball is in the back of the net. Didn't need much on it at the end of the day, but that is 1-0 for Guildford Young College. And I must say, a deserved lead after 15 minutes of significant pressure. St. Patrick's College has conceded. 1-0 to Guildford Young College. So it's the pass here from Berezanski. Looks as though he's going to shoot on his left. Just passes it neatly across there to the striker, Josh Divin, who does not make any mistake. Didn't perhaps hit it as cleanly as he liked, but it doesn't matter how they go in. The fact is that Guildford Young College, if the score remains the same after these 80 minutes, will be the state champions for the fourth time in a row. And there was no surprise in the names that are listed in the lead up to that goal. Berezanski, Yost, Divin have all been great for Guildford Young College already. And as a result, they have the lead. Some work to do now for the boys from Launceston. And they come forward again. And it's Yost. Ball's gone out. And he'll have a throw in. Karch Marco Gozoni will be Impressing upon his charges the importance of the next five minutes of staying stable. They've had a couple of opportunities to get in behind their defenders, have St. Patrick's College, but the final ball hasn't been there. But it has been there so far for Guildford Young College, and here they go again. The goal scorer, Divin. Has won himself a corner. It's been a fairly clean game. Almost 17 minutes in. Matthew Owens, our official, is going to need to hold up play for a foul just on the one occasion. Early in the half. And the ball comes in from the corner. And, oh, it's flashed across to the, to the back post where it's cleared there by Lockie Norton. I don't think the defenders nor the goalkeeper knew too much about what was happening there with the ball coming in. But Lockie was able to respond at the back post and clear 
to give them some time to settle to prepare for this next ball in. The throw comes in from Con. Nice long throw into the box. Very Brentford like. Oh, the flick on is there, but no one there to capitalise for Guildford Young College. It was a great little flick to the back post from the header. Brentford Football Club and the Premier League scored a goal just like that against Arsenal in the first round of the English Premier League a number of weeks ago, but not able to repeat those heroics here. Guildford Young College. But they're on the tack again. Through Yost, who's stripped by Reisig. A chance to counter-attack and a brilliant tackle there. Uh, but not able to maintain possession. It was a, a great tackle there coming in from Harry Hugsley. Ball now with Berezanski. Touch and go. Some nice football here in the front half for Guildford Young College. There's an opportunity to shoot and he has that rip. And that one is over the goals. Does not trouble Oscar Sharapau. But the seas parted there for him for a moment. Hit it right on the right spot, but was just not able to control it to find an area to challenge the goalkeeper. And goes long. Header one by their Yost, unchallenged. The attack relentless at the moment from Guildford Young College. St Patrick's College being forced into their final third and defending that area. It'd be interesting to see how coach Tez Shipper manages this in-game challenge. I can see him from my commentary position having a conversation with the boys on the bench, talking about some potential changes, what they might need to do to get themselves back in this game. Marco Gozoni giving some some pointers to his charges, letting the two strikers know that he wants them to play closer together. As Con goes long again into the box, and there's a push in the back. The second time that Matthew Owens has called upon his whistle to let us know there's been a foul. The hands extended, push in the back. Adam Bevis wins a free kick there. Throw in, header, and that one's going to run out for a goal kick. Well managed there by Adam Bevis. We've creeped down to the 20th minute of this challenge, the halfway point of our first half. It is 1-0 to Guildford Young College over St. Patrick's. And if St. Patrick's are not able to arrest this challenge, then Guildford will go on to become champions for the fourth year in a row. The change has just been made, and number 16 has come on for St. Patrick's College, who is Will Milner. He's seen something there in the midfield that needed to change their... Des Shipper and consequently Will has been brought on. Perhaps looking to shore up the defensive aspect of the midfield there. Steph Tantari now on the ball. And a good contest there with him and, and the co captain for Guildford College, Yost. But the ball is won by Max Reisig. Applies his trade for Riverside in the Northern Championship, and MPL does Max. Talented young player as St. Pat's try to work something forward. But the ball has come to Berezanski. Trying to play the ball through, cleared by Riley Fellows. Who appears to have changed into a, a role deeper in the defence for St. Patrick's College as a result of the substitute that just occurred. crowd here at St. Patrick's College starting to build, but there'll be a bigger crowd uh, when it gets to the lunchtime bell here at the college, and the 1,500 students of the college come streaming out to watch and support their team, should, should create some atmosphere, and spur on the boys from Launceston. Toby Simeone unable to find his way past Ken Con there, who's been exceptional this morning, both in defence and attack. Oh, the ball's come in there! There's no flag. Oh, what an opportunity. Oh, what an opportunity missed there for St. Patrick's College. The ball has come in from Tom O'Byrne, who's meant to slip that one through into Will Milner, the substitute. Oh, I just could not direct it on goal there. The Guildford Young defence had fallen asleep. And the ball right through the heart of the defence managed to find its way through to Milner, who could just not steer it in the right direction. A real opportunity gone begging for St. Patrick's College.
Almost a moment of brilliance there for coach Des Shipper. And Guilford come away with the ball again. And well cleared there by Adam Bevis. As the Guilford young players collide into each other. Steph Tantari now with a chance to find a through ball. Tries to play it into the feet of Reid Beckett. He was unable to hold it up. As Guilford looked to play the ball out. Comes to Callum Ellis on the left-hand side there. It's been everywhere this morning, Callum Ellis, on the left and on the right. Here's Callum and a great tackle there from Alex Vogelaar. Made a similar tackle already this morning, but missed the ball. as a judge for a foul, but he found his target that time. An opportunity again for St. Patrick's College to counter-attack. Steph Tantari. Oh, a late tackle. Very late tackle and straight to his pocket. We've got a yellow card. Very unhappy with the tackle there. Was our centre official, Matthew Owens. The first time he's gone to his book today. Steph Tantari just brings the ball away with his left foot here. And the tackle is late and from behind. A dangerous tackle, to be fair. And the yellow card given. I believe to Harry Hughesloot. His captain ran over, Sam Berezanski, to ask the official to get some clarity on the decision that he made. But it was late and definitely broke up that counter-attack which was on for St. Patrick's College. Adam Bevis is going to look to float one into the box here. And does so. Headed away easily by Guilford Young, who now themselves have a chance to counter-attack down this right-hand side. And the goal scorer there, Josh Divin. Finding himself deep on the right wing. And a great tackle there. You hear the St. Patrick's College students getting behind their representatives. The ball thrown in. That one's going to fall over the back for Riley. Clears it away. Beckett and Con contesting. Great, great win from Con. And Steph Tantari is causing all sorts of trouble for Guilford Young in that midfield. Reed Beckett trying the ball through there. Does not manage to find Toby Simeone. But they still have the possession. Lockie Norton with the throw down the left-hand side. Reed Beckett contesting there with Nelson Quine. And free kick has been awarded to Nelson there on Reed Beckett. 15 minutes until half-time. Guilford Young will be happy with their lead. Have the opportunity, they've had plenty of opportunities to extend that lead. Or oh, just tried to lay it off there for Steph Tantari. Wasn't able to pick it up. And away come Guilford Callum Ellis. Switched over to the right now. Oh, great little dummy there from Josh Divin. And in he goes. The ball comes in at the back post. No, Alex Vogelaar. has been good for St. Patrick's College down that right-hand side at right back for defending. Watch this little step over here from the goal scorer. Oh, beautiful. Left Adam Bevis behind him in his wake. And a great cross into the box there. But... Um, the players just weren't able to get into the box to get on the end of it. And it was cleared there by Alex Vogelaar just before uh, Fred Lagu there had the opportunity to put it in the back of the net. Speaking of Fred, there he is there. Passes the ball back out. There's another ball into the box here. Cleared away from the header. Lockie Norton now with a chance to get down that left wing. Ooh, attempted to take the feet there, but managed to control himself. Con does well to win it. And now it's in Guilford Young possession. Oh, excellent tackle there from Reed Beckett. Con looking to whip the ball into the box early. But desperation defending from Beckett has managed to hold them up for now. There's Shipper, the coach of St. Patrick's College. We're wanting the boys to slow down a little bit, maintain possession. They keep giving it back. Wonderful effort there from Tay Evans. Dived in with the tackle, but was a judge to foul. This game now evolving into more of a physical contest. It's a glorious day here at St. Patrick's College. Just approaching 20 degrees now. It'll be warm out there on the, on the field for the players. The breeze still blowing down towards that Mount Leslie Road end. 
which is the end that Guilford Young have been playing towards. Left to right of your screen. And definitely the, the advantage playing towards that end. St. Patrick's College has still managed to create a few opportunities and Reid Becker's hoping to do so now. Ball goes into the box. Lands with Tantari. Gets a little bit too under it. Fires straight up in the air and is handled easily by Josh Jones, the goalkeeper. Looks to play it long. Look cleared easily by St. Patrick's College. Max Reisig looks to have fouled number 17 there. Uh, Fred Lagu for Guildford Young College. Um, looks to be holding his leg. Whether there was a rolled ankle there. Adam Bevis in a great show of respect. Heading over to check on Fred. Yeah, there, there was definitely a coming together there between the two boys. The official didn't blow his whistle to indicate there was a foul. But play did eventually stop. Looks like there might have been an elbow caught the midriff of Lagu there. Um, but without the benefit of VAR for the officials, we have a throw-in instead. And they've done the sportsman-like thing here and given it to Guildford Young College, who immediately look for Callum Ellis down that right-hand side. It's been good this morning. He's trying to beat Lockie Norton here. Lockie in with a good tackle, and just to stave him off for now. Oh, brilliant job from Ellis. Nearly gets the cross off. He's out for the throw-in. This will be the third opportunity here for Con for the long throw-in. And this time he opts to go short to the feet of his captain, Yost. With some fancy feet work. Comes out to Con. The ball in was short. Only as far as the front post and the defender there for St. Patrick's College. And Steph Tantari looking for an option further up the field. Manages to find the feet of Toby Simeone there. But he is stripped and Guilford have a chance to reset. Simeone putting on the pressure there on Tay Evans, the vice-captain. And Ellis, chance with to bring the ball forward again. Great touch. Managed to find his teammate there, the goal scorer, Josh. And the captain with the ball now, Berezanski, flicks it in on his left and it just over the head of Divin, who nearly, if he was a foot taller, would have had his second goal there. But it's away for St. Patrick's College and an opportunity for Lockie Norton Smith to get away down the right hand side there. Steph Tantari. Can he go around the defender? He does get around Hugsloop, who received a yellow card for attack on Tantari only a few minutes ago. An opportunity there. A great ball in by Steph Tantari. Does manage to find the run of Toby Simeone. There's the beautiful dink ball just in towards the six yard area. The diagonal run from Simeone wasn't able to lift it over the goalkeeper. But that's the, that's the potential that Tantari has, the danger that he can create. Diagonal runs there, if he can find them. Uh, a potential way for them back into the game. And the ball's come over the back. There's no flag. And Divin with a shot. Oh, and it's just gone to the left-hand side of the goal there. But a brilliant ball here. A wonderful diagonal ball down the field. Manages to bring it under the control there, does Divin. On his right foot, hits it across the goalkeeper, just not able to find the side netting that he was looking for. St. Patrick's College caught off guard by the long ball. Guilford Young have been doing well to play it short and build their attack slowly. The ball goes long, strong headed win. But it only comes as far as Rice. He plays it on the outside of his right, and it's through there. He's in here, he's Reed Beckett. Oh, he comes away from the goal, tries to cut it back, and it's an own goal! Reed Beckett had done enough down the left-hand side there. His first touch took him away from the goal. He tried to cut it back in towards his teammate there in Toby Simeone, who was lurking with intent. But the defender sliding in to try and protect his goalkeeper has unfortunately played it into his own net. Max Reisig on the outside of the right boot. And here was the touch I was talking about. Beckett takes it away from the goal. Looks to cut it back in for Simeone. But coming across his goalkeeper there, number 14, Tay Evans, the vice-captain, has not only put the ball in the back of his net, but is in now uh, receiving some treatment for a potential injury. 
It did appear that the, the ball had rolled under his leg there, or that his foot had rolled under his leg. Some potential hurt. And both teams using the opportunity to get a drink. Here it is again. Reed Beckett cutting the ball back in right on the six-yard box. Oh, trying to do the right thing there was the, was the central defender there, uh, Tay Evans. But unfortunately played it into his own net. He knew that Toby Simeone was coming to get it. Obviously did not receive a shout from his goalkeeper to leave it and come out and grab it. And unfortunately has put it past Josh Jones. And it is 1-0 after 33 minutes. Something had been brewing for the St. Patrick's College team. They've been looking to play those diagonal balls in behind the defence of Guildford. They managed to find their way in. And with a bit of poor luck for Guildford College, they found it in the back of their own net. With the treatment still occurring for the unfortunate goal scorer, Tay Evans. Both teams have an opportunity for a break. We have a look back now at both of our goals that we've had so far today through this action. So this is our first goal for Guildford Young College. Callum Ellis has been everywhere for Guildford Young this morning. To Berezanski, a nice little ball into his striker. And Josh Diven, again, didn't get all of it, but a great finish into the bottom right-hand corner. Gave Guildford an early and deserved lead. And our second goal only moments ago. The ball from Max Reisig over the back there to Reed Beckett. And unfortunately, the vice captain, Tay Evans, in trying to clear it, has fired that one into his goalkeeper, Josh Jones, and gone into the net. One all. And the game is in the balance again. I believe it was only three years ago, four years ago now, until back in 2017, these two sides here at this very venue uh, played to a one all draw at the end of full time and entered into a penalty shootout. Could we potentially see that same level of excitement again today? It does unfortunately appear that this is a, a bad injury here for Tay Evans. The stretcher has been brought over and he looks to be in a world of trouble. That left leg could be the left knee, maybe the left ankle. The wheelchair has been brought out to, to get him off the field as well. We're hoping that it's not bad news for Tay. He'd been very good through the game so far. Unfortunate to put that one back in his own net, but it happens to all footballers at some stage in their career. We just pray that this injury is not a bad one for Tay and that he can get back on the ground as soon as possible. Does play for club at a high level, Tay Evans. And with that season two, having recently closed, hoping that it's not all bad news and that he has the opportunity to get himself back fit and firing for next season. But a devastating blow there for the Guildford Young team, having conceded a goal and now lost their centre back. Very unfortunate. I do imagine this means there'll be some injury time added on to this first half. We'll probably elapse four or five minutes at this stage in waiting for the injury treatment. The interesting thing would now be how does Guildford Young College manager Marco Gazzoni cope with this change? watching the action on the bench here and it does appear that number four for Guildford Young College will be coming on in your screen now just taking off the jacket the team's been rearranged and we're taking the kick off and we're back underway here one all in the boys and Sardis state final for soccer at St Patrick's College only three minutes to play in the half, but some significant injury time expected to be added due to the unfortunate injury to Tay Evans. Now thoughts and prayers are with him. 
hoping that he receives some good news as he continues his treatment. It's the ball out there towards the fresh substitute, Ziggy Go Webb. And the officials pick something up there, potentially a foul. And St. Patrick's College will have the opportunity to put the ball again into the box. Yes, there was a foul there. The ball flicked on there in the header by Steph Tantari. And a judge delayed an overly physical challenge on Reed Beckett there. Will allow Adam Bevis to fire this one into the box. <coughs> the St. Patrick's College team has shown an affinity for uh, playing the ball long from these occasions. And this time is no different. It's gone out wide to the right. Steph trying to win a header, but it's flicked away there. And a good header there won by Berezanski. Rasik tries to fire it back in and flicked away by the other co-captain in Yost. And Vogelaar does well enough to manage the ball at right back, but it's given away. Chance for Guilford now to counter-attack. Again, some scrappy passing in these last few minutes here of the first half. As Con away down the right-hand side, does well to clear the ball and find the sideline. Out into touch, the ball goes. And number two for St. Patrick's close there, Jack Woodland, who's come on. Uh, looks has come on for Lockie Norton. Gets his first touch of the game. Ball in now to Toby Simeone. Giving a bit of space and time. He's got good feet. Can he fire off a shot? He can, but it's off to the right. Did well to manufacture some time and space here. Look at the footwork. He's going to go right and left. Then right again to open up himself on the right-hand side. Just wasn't able to get the curve on the ball back around into the far net. And Guilford Young looked to play it out. And some good football there from Guilford Young working through the St. Patrick's College defensive press. Working the ball down the field. It's come to count. No, the Ziggy Webb low on the right-hand side there. And cleared in centre defence. as we tick slowly towards the end of the first half. Ziggy Wood trying a, a, a flick there. Nice little bit of play there from Con and Yost. And they're going to reset, play it all the way back into the midfield. Crowd of St. Patrick's College here continuing to build as the day continues to warm up, approaching the top temperature of the day, 21 degrees. That was forecast. A breeze still blowing down to the right-hand side of the screen. Ideal conditions for football as Guildford Young College look to make the most of this attack. They still have possession, Guildford. It's with Berezanski, the captain, looking for options. Hoping for his teammates to make his mind up for him. Let's come back to Hugh Sloot. Plays it in there. Handball they've picked up. For another Guildford substitute, it appears to have been. Into injury time now in the first half. The ball played forward. And he's done well to hold it up there. Toby Simeone, but they're away with it again. Guilford just holds the ball. Oh, I was looking to play that big diagonal ball, which has had some success for both teams today. And Bevis has headed it back towards his own goal. Put his central defensive partner under pressure. And cleared this time by Bevis. Makes sure of it that time. As our official... Matthew Owen checks his watch. Throw comes in there. Very competitive. Very competitive contest. Very physical. Oh, there you go. Just as I said that. The whistle's been blown. Coming together there between the two young men. Looked like there might have been a raised elbow in that, con in that contact. But a free kick here for Guildford Young College.
Yost is going to stand over this one. He's taken a number of corners already today that have been dangerous. Try an opportunity now to get one into the danger area for Guildford Young College. Number of Guildford players waiting at the back post to attack the ball as it comes in. Towards the front post. Oh, it came through and has only gone as far as Toby Simeone, who's come all the way back from his striker position to help with the defence. Not out of trouble yet, the strikers. Only a few moments left in this half. And an opportunity for Guildford to head into the break with a lead if they can work out something here. It's a nice play on the edge of the box. Throwing now for Ziggy Go Webb. He's going to leave it for his teammate in Con. He's disappeared out of shot because he's looking for that long throw. And the flick. St. Patrick's not able to clear it initially, but done eventually again by Toby Simeone. The captain with the ball now for Guildford, twisting and turning this way and that, trying to escape from his defender. Patience again here in the build-up for Guildford. Just clarifying for our viewers here in the stream provided by Duff TV that they are 40-minute halves, but that we did have a significant injury to the vice-captain of Guildford Young, Tay Evans, in the action of scoring an own goal. He's received a significant injury, had to be stretched from the ground. We'll have an update for you in our second half on his condition and the nature of the injury. But that has extended the amount of injury time required for this first half action as we forge into now the 45th minute, minute of play in this first half. And again, an opportunity for Yost to curl the ball into the box. Where the dangers are, Josh Divin, the goal scorer there. Oh, finds it on his right foot there was Berezanski. A similar opportunity to one in the already in this first half for Toby Simeone. Not able to steer that on target. Here is Berezanski, found himself into a good position on the penalty spot. Just not able to get the connection that he wanted on it, to steer it in the right direction with the pace that he had hoped. And there is a long kick from the St. Patrick's College goalkeeper, bringing our first half of, of play to close here in the Boys Sartus Soccer Final for 2021. It is St. Patrick's College 1, Guildford College 1. And in our first half, we're back for second half action. But now we'll take you to the highlights of the action in the first half. In position, the number seven there. Callum Ellis gets the ball across. There's some time in the box here. Can he get a shot off? Oh, brilliant defending there. That was Alex Vogelaar for St. Patrick's College hitting the deck there. It was Josh Divin. And the ball's come back. Chance for a shot. Oh, cleared. St. Patrick's College, some very rugged defending there. A couple of really open. His way through. He's had plenty of the ball so far today. Austin Yost has been pivotal in that midfield role. And looks to switch it. Oh, and it's come through, not able to control it. was Lockie Norton and Callum Ellis, who's caused some difficulties for the college. Great ball in! Oh, doesn't manage to fire it on goals, though. Another tremendous ball in from Callum Ellis, who is giving them nightmares down the right-hand side. And again, another ball in. St. Patrick's College able to handle it. The ball is cleared away. It looks like... As the ball comes to Callum Ellis, what can he create? Now with Berezanski. Oh, and the ball is in the back of the net. Didn't need much on it at the end of the day, but that is 1-0 for Guildford Young College. And I must say, a deserved lead after 15 minutes of significant pressure. So both coaches will be looking for them to settle, find the feet of their teammates. As the ball comes to Callum Ellis, what can he create? Now with Berezanski. Oh, and the ball is in the back of the net. Didn't need much on it at the end of the day, but that is 1-0 for Guildford Young College. And I must say, a deserved lead after 15 minutes of significant pressure. St. Patrick's College has conceded 1-0 to Guildford Young College. Simeone unable to find his way past Ken Con there, who's been exceptional this morning, both in defence and attack. Oh, the ball's come in there. 
There's no flag. Oh, what an opportunity. Oh, what an opportunity missed there for St. Patrick's College. The ball has come in from top. Opportunity again for St. Patrick's College to counter-attack. Steph Tantari. Oh, a late tackle. Very late tackle. And straight to his pocket, we've got a yellow card. Very unhappy with the tackle there. Was our centre. Oh, excellent tackle there from Reed Beckett. Con looking to whip the ball. Gets a little bit too under it. Fired straight up in the air and is handled easily by Josh Jones, the goalkeeper. Looks to play it long, but cleared easily by St. Patrick's College. Max Reisig looks to have fouled number 17 there, uh, Fred Lagu for Guildford Young College. Um, looks to be holding his long, strong-headed win. But it only comes as far as Reisig, who plays it on the outside of his right, and it's through there. He's in here, he's Reed Beckett. Oh, he comes away from the goal, tries to cut it back, and it's an own goal! Reed Beckett had done enough down the left-hand side there. His first touch took him away from the goal. He tried to cut it back in towards his teammate there in Toby Simeone, who was lurking with intent. But the defender sliding in to try...
So good afternoon and welcome back to the Sardis 2021 Boys Soccer Final between St Patrick's College and Guildford College. We are approaching the start of the second half. My name is Casimir Douglas and I am your commentator for this afternoon's action on a beautiful clear blue sky day. A bit of wind heading down towards the Mount Leslie Road end as it blows to the right hand side of your screen. And that is the way that St Patrick's College will be kicking after managing to find a equaliser towards the end of the second half. It is 1-0 in this contest. The last six of nine grand finals for the Sardis Boys Soccer has been played between these two sides. With St Patrick's College winning a penalty shootout here back in 2017, the last time that they won. And Guildford Young College having won the last three in a row, looking to be the first team in the history of this competition to win four in a row. Goal scorers in the first half for Guildford Young College after 10 minutes was Josh Divin, who scored with a beautiful strike on his right foot into the back right hand corner of the goal, uh, beating goalkeeper of St Patrick's College. And then an unfortunate own goal uh, just before the end of the second half tied up the score, um, scored by Tay Evans against his own goalkeeper, who unfortunately in the action of doing so has, uh, the early prognosis is broken his ankle. So our thoughts and prayers go out to him. There is an ambulance on the way to get him to a medical facility so that um, he can have the treatment that he needs. We wish him well in recovery. But we're underway now in second half action. St Patrick's College now kicking with the wind towards the right-hand side of the screen, which is the side that Guildford dominated down in the first half, having the majority of possession and creating a number of wonderful opportunities. Both coaches will have had the opportunity in that extended uh, break. Oh, there looks like there's been an injury here, a head injury, which means that the official will have to stop play. Anytime there is a perceived head injury in a game of football, as per the FIFA rules, the referee must stop the game immediately. So you can see it here. The ball comes in, trying to win the header, and it looks as though Reed Beckett, in the process of trying to win the header, came from underneath and jammed the top of his head up into the chin there and uh, cause the stoppage of play. But Guildford now on the attack. Some fancy footwork there from number 12, Anthony Mamick, who's been playing on the left wing. Um, not able to find his way past the St Patrick's College defenders. A nice turn in the middle there, but it's been stripped of it. And here comes Steph Tantari. But the, the defender able to see it out over the line as lunchtime at St Patrick's College beckons and the students wander out to watch the action. Uh, Guildford Young, I believe... Uh, have had a pretty successful day in the other sports so far, um, having, having it looks like, won the hockey and just confirmed that they, Guildford Young College have also won the netball by a number of points too. So they'll be going for the trifecta here, the boys from Guildford Young College. But St Patrick's College will be desperate to not let them head back down the highway with all of the jewellery. And down the left-hand side of the wing here come Guildford College. The ball comes in there, cut out by Riley Fellows, who's been good since moving to centre-backs with Steph Tantari again. The ball is there for Toby Simeone. The flag has stayed down. Did look like it might have been offside, but the call's been made by the official. Can he find some space to cross it? Turning, turning, back onto his right foot. And he's stripped there by the captain, Yost. Manages to come away, tries a short pass. Oh, a good contest for the ball there and cleared for Guildford Young College. And Max Reisig, who started that play for the own goal, um, trying to work some magic here for St Patrick's College around the box. And already that wind having an effect and a lot more territory in this half already for the boys from St Patrick's College. Mr Shipper, Des Shipper, the coach of the St Patrick's College boys, will have talked to them at half time about the importance of using the wind to their advantage. And throw comes in, Guildford have won back possession. And a great tackle there from Steph Tantari to win back possession in the number nine. He's going to look to cross and does so. Gets it across that six-yard box. Coming there was Max Reisig. Oh, there's a, an appeal for a penalty. Looked as though he's potentially tackled by Con, But referee Matthew Owens was not interested. Has waved it away. No penalty is the decision. As the two made contact there. Skillful Young try to force the action down there in with the long ball. And Oscar Sharapow and the goals for St Patrick's College has gone long. You can see the effect the wind has had, bringing that all the way down to the front third. Rasik looking for Tantari. Can't make it stick. Ball is now with Berezanski. Coming away for Guildford, looking for someone to play to feet. Does find the feet of 
Anthony Mamik. Berzanski again. Finds Govinda Gurung. Berzanski with his third touch in about 30 seconds. Trying to work something here. Unable to get past the defender. Comes back to Gurung. Goes back to Conn. And Guilford a chance to reset. Continue the momentum in the first half, playing this possession style, short passing game. And here's Max Rasi for St. Patrick's College coming through the middle. Was looking for the feet of Tantari. Was fouled in the act of the pass there um, by Berezanski. There was one yellow card given in the first half for Hugh Sloot, wearing number eight for Guilford Young College, playing in that central defensive midfield position in the act of breaking up the attack. If we wanting to make sure that he doesn't make any further mistakes like that late tackle, lest he be sent off and the advantage given to St. Patrick's College. Guilford Young again patient in the build-up. They're not precise enough as it's cut out there by Steph Tantari. As the crowds of St. Patrick's College students gather around to watch this auspicious occasion. Josh Jones in goal for Guilford Young College. Only troubled once today, unfortunately by his own defender in Tay Evans, conceding an own goal just before the end of the second half. Yost on the ball for Guilford Young. Giving it away and a chance for a counter-attack here if they can move the ball quickly. But depossessed is Simeone by Gurung. The ball comes away to the right-hand side for Guilford Young College. Con, who's had a great game, strong defensively, and used the ball wisely. Decides to play long against the wind. But he does find his man in Josh Divin, the goal scorer in the first half, who gets away from his man, Riley Fellows. And Gurung able to reset here for Guilford. A very nice piece of build-up play here from Guilford Young College. Let's see if Ellis can have the final product cleared by St. Patrick's College. We'll have a throw in here. Just five minutes into second half action. We would say that in roughly 34 minutes we'll know who our state champions are for Sardis Boys Soccer for this year. But if our 2017 game between these two sides here is anything to judge by, we could see ourselves in for extra time and a penalty shootout. But both, sides, both sides will be wanting to avoid that obligation and try and win it inside these 80 minutes. Steph Tantari cuts out the pass, isn't able to capitalise, makes a good tackle, but assured in his keeping there, Josh Jones. Having a conversation with his defenders, lets them know he'll be going long. And strong header there from Riley Fellows. Ooh, Will Milner. Came on as a substitute in the first half, not able to control it. Gives Berezanski an opportunity to go forward, and it does come into the feet of Josh Divin. There's an opportunity to turn on the edge of the box. It's an opportunity now for Guilford Young and cleared. Some dogged defending there by St. Patrick's College. I did think there that Anthony Mamick, as he picked the ball up here, was going to manage to get a shot away on his right foot, but some excellent defending from the St. Patrick's College defenders. Sees that attack thwarted. So he comes into the feet. Adam Bevis trying to keep Divin at bay. Now it's the slide tackle. And it's judged out for a throw in. Linesman flag indicates throw in. On the opposite side of Con, Con has taken a number of the long throws from that area on the opposite side of the field this morning, this afternoon. But the short throw is misdirected and we have a goal kick for St. Patrick's College. One all is the score at the St. Patrick's College soccer ground in this state final. Both sides dominated their competitions in the north and the south. We're here today for the decider to determine whose name will be inscribed on the shield. Can Guilford Young, for the first time, make it four years in a row? This was gone there. And they played it early here, an opportunity to get in behind for Mamik. And great defending there from Riley Fellows, who's been exceptional in centre defence today. There was the foul. That was Riley Fellows in the back of Divin, who didn't like it. But 
wary enough there it was Berezanski to take the quick pass. Slided it to Mamik. He wasn't able to capitalise on the opportunity, but they've won themselves a corner. Yost has provided a, a mixture of balls, both short and long. This one right in the middle and the header there's the opportunity. Can Diffin put it in? It's defended right off the line there by Bevis after Diffin managed to get his left foot through it. And it's cleared for a throw-in. The judge to have come off Guildford Young College. So here's the throw at the corner rather. Comes in, bounces off the St. Patrick's College defender, falls to Divin, fires it on his left. Bevis managed to trap it in between his legs to prevent the goal. An outstanding piece of defending there from the captain. And another opportunity goes begging for Guildford Young College. They've certainly created the more throughout the 50 minutes of this game. Can they capitalise? This throw to be taken by Collins. Cleared away there again by Fellows. Tentari with the flick on. Hugh Sloot with the kick over the head. Looking to clear it up the ground. Has come off the other side of the foot for Arpen Ray. Now to attack. Great tackle from Hugh Sloot. Clear that out. So Arpen Ray, one of the younger students in the St. Patrick's College side. At only 14 or 15 years of age. He's come on now as a sub. An opportunity to show that he belongs in this side, in this game, and show off his skill. Oh, and he's done well there to close it down. The keeper, Josh Jones, out just ahead of Reed Beckett, who was the assist for the own goal early in the half. Con smashes it down the ground, looking for Ellis on the right wing, but it's headed away. 30, 30 minutes remain in this engaging and intriguing contest for the Sardis Boys Championship. Ellis plays it horizontal for his captain there. He weaves through four players, still going. Oh, and a great tackle to cut it out. Thought he might manage to find some time in his left foot there. Yost can get a shot. And there he is again, Fellows, with the header out. Comes to Rossi. The referee's not going to look kindly on that. He's had one yellow card already there. Hughes already had a yellow. Oh, the action is erupting here. There was something there said between Alex Vogeler and the captain of Guildford Young College, Austin Yost. So here's the foul. Ball comes over. Brysik trying to win the ball. And I think the St. Patrick's College players and coach Des Shipper there are saying that that was an intentional foul. I apologise for the language of the crowd here and the chance. Here it is again. Rossi going up for the header. And Hughes Luke. Looks like a nasty looking coming together. Nasty looking contact, but does not appear to have been intentional. The St. Patrick's College players, aware that Hugh Sleep was already given a yellow card in the first half, were petitioning Matthew Owens, our centre official today, to reach into his pocket. And he is but only to give a yellow card to Alex Vogelaar, who appears to have said something unwanted to Austin Yost, the, cop the captain of Guildford Young College, who reacted explosively to whatever comment Vogelaar had to make. But there's only one yellow card in this instance. And at this stage, that has gone to Alex Vogelaar. We'll be a feeling in this game now. Emotions boiling over. As the players erupted there and a small skirmish broke out. That tells you what it means to these young men. Yes, they all play at a high level of club football. But to win this with their mates is their priority. So here's the header. Oh, it's a nasty coming together of the two boys there. You can see why Rice had spent plenty of time on the ground. There was a, potentially a clash of heads. So there it was. Vogelaar came straight in and pushed Hugh Sloot, which 
Yost did not take kindly to. And that's what the yellow card was for. Vogler and Reisig, classmates in Year 10 at St. Patrick's College. Looking out for each other there as this game resumes. Steph Tantari with the ball is going to test the goalkeeper. Perhaps not intended, but thankfully it's just floated over the head for Guilford Young, over the head of Josh Jones. And they have a goal kick. Now they've reset this contest 15 minutes in. Let's see how they react to this occasion. Steph Tantari. Oh, it's his third option from long range today. His third opportunity from long range today, rather. And that one follows the pattern of the previous two. Not able to get the radar on target. Here he goes away again. Skips away from multiple defenders. Too much time and space and opportunity to shoot. College principal Mr Daly there with his hands on his head. Disappointed that Steph Tantari was not able to convert his opportunity there. The crowd getting involved. That's going to be a throw in for St Patrick's College. A bit of volume and feeling around this, context, this contest now. Throw goes into the box. Can Arpen get something on it? No, he cannot. Ball handled there by the Guildford defence so far. Tantari looking to win a corner. And it's been a judge to have fouled the Guildford defender. Guildford Young have a free kick. <laughs> 25 minutes remain in the half. Score remains 1 all. Which side is going to be able to create the decisive opportunity and convert? To have their name inscribed on that shield. Some brilliant play here. Nice little ball in. There's an opportunity. Squares it on the left. No, he moves back onto the right. There's the captain, Berezanski. Did well to open himself up and find some space on the right. Takes it on his right foot. Pauses in front of Bevis. Little space on the right, trying to curl into that top right hand side, but unfortunately, just a few metres away from a potential winner in this contest. Here come Guilford again. Nice touch there from Berezanski. Goes through for Mamic. Cleared again, though, by St. Patrick's College. Good crowd out to watch the action now. Riley clears it out for a throw in. It's been an intriguing contest to watch. And Guilford Young very much controlling the possession, looking to play the uh, the patient short passing games. And Patrick's College trying to hit on the counter. And Steph Tantari is the fulcrum in that counter attack, has had a pivotal role in the game so far today. But all of the front players for Guilford Young have been outstanding, including Yost and Berezanski, who have been constants on the ball. Both teams have defended really well. Both sides have had multiple opportunities, but as yet, both teams have only managed to find the net once apiece. Josh Jones goes long, finds Adam Bevis. Comes to the feet of Gurung, he's not able to control it. There's the man, Steph Tantari. Plays on the right-hand side for Arpen Ray. But well defended there by Matthias Collins. Sees it out for a goal kick. St. Patrick's College preferring to play the long ball to look for their strikers. Namely Toby Simeone in a pocket of space to work some of their magic. Both coach Des Shipper and coach Marco Gerzoni will be the envy of many coaches in Tasmania with the amount of young talent and potential they have on display today. Speaking of which, Max Rysik, brilliant ball there for Toby Simeone. The flag has stayed down. He's clipped it over the top and it's hit the post. Would you believe it? Through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper there, a brilliantly weighted ball from, from Max Rysik through to his riverside teammate in Toby Simeone. Here's the ball again from Max Rising. He's obviously recovered from the head knock before. 
was kept on side by the man at left back and chipping it in towards the goal. He made perfect connection. He's not able to steer it in the right direction. The best moment of the half there produced by St. Patrick's College. As the captain there, Yost, trying to work his way past Alex Vogelaar, two who had their disagreement before after the head clash. As St. Patrick's College making a change here. And Lockie Norton coming on, back into that fullback role. And Alex Vogler, the man who received the yellow card, coming off. Hughesloot looking for Divin. He's going to try and slide it in there to Ellis, but it's cut out there. Oh, potential coming together there, but Guildford have come away with it. Turn it over again. Bevis goes long. There's no one there in terms of his teammates. So Josh Jones will have a chance to reset for Guildford Young. Well, plenty of opportunities have been created. Neither goalkeeper has had a lot to do today. Some tidy footwork there, shown by Yost. Gets the ball back again. Looks for his co-captain. And Berezanski comes wide to Ellis. Floats that ball in from the right-hand side. Perhaps didn't get the connection and he wanted. Looked to be troubled there, potentially, for a second. Did Sharapow, but collects and look to go long. Oh, great touch from Tantari, <clears throat> but taken away from him there by Yost. Ricey, who's working more and more into the game as a midfielder, has been fouled. Might have been a small tug of the shirt. An apology there coming in from Mamic. As the St. Patrick's College boys stand over the ball, we conspire about what they'll do with this dead ball play. So it was there. I think Mamic just had his arms around him there, holding him back a little bit. As Tentari fires this one into the box for St. Patrick's College. It's deep in the box. Jones equal to it. Comes out well to collect. Chance to set Ellis away on a counter-attack. And a great tackle there from Riley Fellows. He's been exceptional in defence today as Mr. Roy Russell goes to collect the ball to get us restarted. Now past the halfway mark of this second half. The 22nd minute of half time, both teams only have 18 minutes to find that winner. Bevis with the header. It's been sturdy all day. But now at the feet of Berezanski. Finds Divin. Can Divin find a ball in the box? Oh, Berezanski stripped. And Tantari now with it. I was looking to link up with a teammate, but no one was there. W whistle came to the mouth for the official, but his wave play on. He's trying to weave his way through again, Yost. Played a lot of impressive little one-twos through the middle of the midfield today. Just waiting for his opportunity to come off. Great defending there, back to his goalkeeper. Been played at a higher place today. Lots of substitutions used by both coaches. Opportunity for the boys to rest, get a drink, get back on the field. Assume he only tries one. Ooh. Just dipped away there to the right-hand side. Goalkeeper didn't react. Found himself some time and space there, about 30 yards out at Simeone. Ball's come from Tantari. Little back heel. Looked up. And he's fired that one. Thought it was heading towards the right-hand side of the net there, but... Only into the crowd, the legions of St. Patrick's College supporters who have come out to support their team this afternoon. The ball's with Ellis. He's well handled by Jack Woodland there. Con with the throw for Guilford Young. To the feet of Mamic. Comes back to Berezanski. Some really great movement and passing there from Guildford Young College. Unable to find the final product there and get a ball into the box. But really impressive movement. They've obviously been well drilled as a team. They know each other's movements well. Which is impressive for a side that may have only played two years together. It's Guildford Young being a year 11 and 12 college only. Lockie Norton away down the right wing. Oh, 
he's built into the crowd. The crowd like him being involved in the action. And a nice flick there from Arpin. Tantari's the first one to react. He's into the box, looking for a cross. No, he's gone for a shot. And the first time he's been called in to make a save today is Tantari. Fires that one his right hand side, looking to be the keeper at the near post. But Josh Jones in goals for Guildford Young, equal to it. A clean, strong punch away, right in front of Principal Mr. Tony Daly there. In the corner, it's going to come in from Arpen Ray. It's low and it's hard and it's an opportunity, but again, Josh Jones, impressive take. Josh Jones does play into the NPL for, uh, for Clarence. As the clock winds down here, both teams employing the long ball more often. Look and find that chance, perhaps catch the... And Max Rysig, will he go on his left? He does. Three saves in as many minutes now for Josh Jones. After being untroubled all day, he's getting busy. Comes out wide. And Diva manages to beat Norton there. Not once, but twice. Getting away down the left, going to look for a cross. Norton gives him a little nudge before the tackle is won there by Bevis. A few words exchanged there by the boys. Not out of trouble yet, St. Patrick's College. Collins tries to square it across. Does come to Ellis. Can they work the cross in? And there's a foul. Yep, judged a foul there by Jack Woodland. Uh, he had his body on Fred Lagu there. And there is the moment. Jack Woodland, just one step behind his opponent. And it's in a great position here for Guildford Young College. And it will be Yost to curl the ball in. Having a conversation with his co-captain Berezanski there to decide on the best course of action. Neither side have managed to win a decisive header in the box from these situations today. Perhaps it's their first opportunity. The ball comes in. Oh, it looks like it may have been a shot. Trying for the top right-hand corner of the goal. No wall offered by St. Patrick's College to deter him. His eyes lit up. And thought, oh, I'll try some of that. And the wall did enough to deter him. He lifted the ball too far. Wasn't able to bring it down in time. Strong header in midfield. Norton and Divin again doing battle. Norton comes away as the victor this time. Arpen Ray for Tantari. Again, tries to find Sobe Simeone. He's drifted out to the right. The ball's back into the box. A chance for Beckett to turn and shoot. It's come to Tantari. He's put it in the net. It's a goal for St. Patrick's College. 2-1 they lead as Tantari heads out into the crowd to celebrate with his, with his schoolmates. The crowd here at St. Patrick's College erupt as St. Patrick's College takes the lead. So here's the start of the play, comes from Tantari. Had thought that Simeone might shoot there, cuts it back for Beckett. But look at this brilliant play from Beckett. Decides to pass it off to his teammate, tucks it into the right-hand side of the goal. He won't score too many easier than that, Steph Tantari. Wonderful composure. The defence late in shutting his, his run down into the box. It was a late run. And cue the wild celebrations. 13 minutes remain. And if the score goes unchanged, St. Patrick's College will reclaim the Sardis State Boys Championship for the first time in four years. It's all to do now for Guildford Young. They've been exceptional today, Guildford Young. The patience in their build-up, the skills on display. They just need that final product now. And who's going to provide it for them? Bevis again, strong in defence. And 
a short throw this time from Con. He's battling with Simeone there. He's come back to help out in defence. St Patrick's College seed off again. Can Guilford Young again solve this puzzle of the St Patrick's College defence? Managed to unlock it 10 minutes into the game, but not since. And that man has been key in this. Yost. Going down the right-hand side. What can he manage? He's away from his defender. He's got an opportunity to cut it back. And he does through his co-captain, Berezanski, who tries to get onto his left. But Arp and Ray managed to pinch it away from him. Not out of trouble yet. A chance for it to get onto the left here for Co Collins. Comes out wide for Mamich. Again trying to find space. Another tackle from Arp and Ray. Now Berezanski. No, and Tito Brown just come on for St. Patrick's College. Pinches that one. And Tentari is away. Rysik does not mess around with it. Pumps it down the ground. A strong header there for Guilford Young. Keeps the attack going. Mamich. Berezanski. And he's been pinched there by Ray. His teammates not talking to him. Collins drifting inside. And that creates some space there for Berezanski on the left. Tries to kill that one into the back post. Oh, nearly came over the back there for Fred Lagu. He's not able to bring it under control. And it's away by Simeone. Tom O'Byrne battling there. And identical position to a few moments ago has come through to Lagu. Berezanski. Oh, and it's saved by Oscar Sharapow. Berezanski with an opportunity nearly identical to that of Steph Tantari. Not able to capitalise. A golden opportunity gone begging for Guilford Young College. And the ball's come down the other end. The action fast and furious at this moment. Reed Beckett holding it up again. This time did not lay it off for Tantari. But cuts it back. Oh, great keeping. Josh Jones out at his front post. No respite for either team now. Oh, there's the opportunity from Berezanski. who will be kicking himself with that one. Open on the penalty spot. Could, pick, uh, could have picked either side of the keeper. Just rushed it. And Oscar Sharapow was able to handle it. A great few minutes of football there. A really high quality game. Some, some very young, talented players. As Guilford Young come forward again. Mamich on the left, trying to find the ball in. His foot runs over the ball and leaves it behind him. But there's no way out for St. Patrick's College at the moment. They're on the front foot, Guilford, looking for an equaliser. Collins. Back for Hughesley. Oh, great ball to the feet of Divin there. Was looking to open up for the shot. No wrestle from the referee after the tackle, which we know that FIFA have asked officials all around the world to let some of those low-level leg contact goals go. And there's been an interception there. It's come to, to Tito Brown. Oh, tried it on his right foot. Couldn't maintain balance. Didn't get all of it. Easily mopped up by the keeper there. Down they come along the right-hand side. Guilford Young to Fred Lagu. He plies his trade with the Norky Knights. Comes across to Matthew Collins. But it's picked away from him. And it's come to Reed Beckett. One-on-one -on -one with his defender. Not able to beat him. Needed some support there from his teammates. Guilford back to the game plan, playing it out. Well, their patience and quality reward them in these final eight minutes. Not when it's like that. Up and Ray trying to chip the goalkeeper. But again, Jones, who has had more involvement in this game in the last 10 minutes than in the previous 60. Ask his teammates to give him some options there was Berezanski. He's run tirelessly in the midfield today. And Tito Brown couldn't quite get back to his feet to capitalise on the space that he created for himself away from his defenders. Cut out there by Bevis, and it's come to Arpen Ray. Looking for support, managed to hold off his defender. It's been turned over. Referee's blowing the whistle there, and they're underway again. Berezanski, frustrated with the official's call. Let's come out wide to Yost. <coughs> Showing some fancy footwork there, Yost. He's created some space on the left-hand side. He's around his defender in Fellows. Fellows saying that he got the ball. And the official is... What? Ooh. Not quite sure what the decision the official has made there. 
Oh, I think it is a penalty. Yes, he has. He's called a penalty. Remonstrations here from the St. Patrick's College boys. Here it is again. Some fancy footwork here. Yost. And here's Fellows. Seems to have got the ball there. Controversial decision. But that's the way the football goes. No VAR available for our official. As it stands, it is two goals for St. Patrick's College, one for Guildford Young College. The referee, Matthew Owens, has said that Riley Fellows has fouled the captain, Austin Yost, who's been outstanding today, in the box, and subsequently pointed to the penalty spot. And Yost himself will take the kick and have a chance to equalise. We wait the official's whistle. Yost versus Shara Power. Got a hand to a sharp power, but it's a great goal and a fantastic finish there for Austin Yost. Deserved a goal for his efforts today. And Shades. Shades of 2017. We could be headed for extra time and potentially a few more penalty, shoot, penalty shots. And there it is. Great finish by Austin Yost. Can't be more accurate than that in the bottom left-hand corner. Sharapau guessed the right way, but the accuracy and power was too much for Oscar Sharapau. And the game is now 2-2. Ooh, Yost with an inadvertent foul there on, on Tantari. Here it is again, Tantari. Drifts the ball away with his right foot. Yost late on it. Then accidentally stepping on the back foot of Tantari there. So Tantara will float this one into the box. A two-man wall comprised of Yost and Kuren. Tantara to float this one in towards the back post. No, it goes short into the front post. And it's away. Kuren for Guildford Young College. Looking for options. Could we see a miraculous comeback here? The ball's floated over the back. An opportunity for Guildford Young College. A magnificent ball on the right-hand side there, on the outside of the right foot. Similar to one from Max Reisig that set up the St. Patrick's College goal in the first half. Drifted around towards the back post and beat Bevis, who was in an ideal position. Landed at the foot of the St. Patrick's College defender. He subsequently cleared it for a corner. And the Guildford Young student there, Austin Yost, take another corner. And he's gone long to the back post, clearing header from St. Patrick's College. The ball's flicked back in by Guerin, but away out for a throw in. As we enter the 78th minute of this contest. Two minutes before injury time, and we could be headed for extra time. But, the ball, but they're not out of the woods yet, St. Patrick's College. Won a penalty from an identical spot here a few moments ago. Tries to flick it over his man, Norton. Norton does enough to fend him off. And a goal kick. Some subs being made. Steph Tantara coming up for a break. A few minutes rest. Well played. So just confirming that if the score remains 2 all, when the final whistle is blown here, there will be two times five minute periods of extra time played. So we'll see an extra 10 minutes. Always kept the whistle in his pocket there. He flew in for the tackle there. A brilliant side tackle from Gurun. He's won the ball for his team. Mamich unable to find the feet of Berezanski. A chance to counter-attack for St. Patrick's College. Was being whipped forward there. Beckett not able to get it under control. And the passing from, from that young man there, uh, Nelson Quiet, has been exceptional today. For Guildford Young College. Has wonderful 
composure and patience on the ball. And his passing has been key to the build from the back approach for this Guildford young team today. Some more substitutions being made. As Ziggy Go Webb comes on again for Guildford Young. And one of the goal scorers, Josh Devine, makes way. Reid Beckett has a break for St. Patrick's College. And Campbell Young comes on. Number 19 there will go straight up front. So only 30 seconds, remain, 30 seconds remaining in extra time, in, in uh, normal time, sorry, for injury time. We'll see how much injury time that the official plays. Campbell Young, having just come on, gets the ball into the feet of Will Milner. Will Milner looking to slip it in for Max Rasig, and that was to do so. Simeone, now to Rasig. Chance to build here for St. Patrick's College. Rasig had Ray on the right-hand side, chose not to use him. Contest in the box, it comes to Brown. He's not able to make the most of it. Guren clears the ball wide. And it's with Berezanski. So regular time has now elapsed. We're in injury time in the second half here. Two all in the boys. Sada senior first soccer final. This brilliant live stream here brought to you today by Duff TV on the glorious St. Patrick's College soccer grounds with the wind picking up now. Heading towards the Mount Leslie Road end. If it does go to penalties, both teams will need to agree at which end. Guilford Young come forward again. Riley Fellows and Betters Berezanski there, but have won themselves a corner. Could be the last kick of regular time. The official asking for a ball. Speed up the process. Oh, it's a throw in, my apology. Comes from Con. He's had a number of these long throw ins today. The flick there, attempted. Fawn to Berezanski. Oh, it's a brilliant shot, but just over the bar. Capitalised on his opportunity there. Only scored about 10 minutes ago. Did Yost. He's fallen to his feet again. Identical to another shot he took earlier today that just flicked over the bar. That could be the final significant opportunity. The final significant chance created today in regular time as we now head for 10 minutes of extra time. So confirming there will be two five minute halves of extra time played as the wind continues to pick up here at the St. Patrick's College grounds. You can see the movement of the trees in the background of Oscar Sharapow there as he sends it long one more time and we are into extra time. So after 80 minutes, the sides cannot be separated to all. And we now have extra time. It was a furious, furious game of football in that second half action. After being one all at half time, we saw an excellent goal scored by Steph Tantari for St. Patrick's College to give them the lead. And they did manage to hold on to that lead for about half an hour until in the final few minutes of this second half, a run into the box by Austin Yost, the co-captain of Guildford Young College, was brought down in the box by Riley Fellows. He's had a wonderful game for St. Patrick's College. He won the penalty and, and consequently stood up, took the penalty, beat Sharapow into the bottom left-hand corner. Here's the action I was talking about. Brings down the player, Fellows indicating he won the ball. That's not enough for Matthew Owens who indicates that he took the player first, went through the player to get to the ball. As Yost embraces his teammates for having won the penalty, remonstrations from the St. Patrick's College players. But Matthew Owens has made his decision. That nice turn on the ball is away from Arpen Ray, who doesn't stay on his feet. Small little touch passed. Fellows goes to ground. Probably didn't need to. There were two players there ready to support him. That was enough to win the penalty. which just held his composure. And as you'll see in a moment, was able to 
push it past Sharap Howe into the bottom left hand corner. I mean, the pressure on this young man, Yoss, stepping up to take this penalty after having won the penalty himself. He's come up here as the co captain of his side, wants to lead them to victory. There's no greater mark of a high quality leader than converting from the penalty spot and sending his team into extra time. Right, we welcome you back here to extra time action at St. Patrick's College Soccer Grounds for this 2021 Sardis Senior First Boys State Final. As we now toss the coin for the second time in this game. And just as the first two halves of football played out, 
Guilford Young. We'll go to the right of your screen first. St Patrick's College to the left. So Guilford Young going with the wind for this first of two five-minute halves. And if we're not able to separate these two sides, we go into penalties. There was a fitting and stirring tribute at the start of our game to Liam Monigal. A recently passed staff member of both colleges has been involved in the life of both colleges. The game has been played with the ferocity and respect that Liam will be proud of. As Guilford get off to a quick start, Adam Bevis asking for the crowd to get behind St Patrick's College as they now find themselves with the task of searching for another winner. They may have thought they had it when Steph Tantari put them in the lead 2-1 after a great piece of hold-up play. Reed Beckett instrumental in the scoring of that goal. But the penalty was won by Austin Yost for Guildford Young College. And 2-2. Two -two. He's been busy today, Anthony Mamish, on that left wing. Started there and continues to be deployed there by his coach, Marco Gozzoni, who he and his counterpart, Des Shipper, will be asking for the boys to reach deep. They'll be tired. It's been warm. It's been windy. Battling in there still is Yost. Manages to skip away from his marker there. Comes to Fred Lagu, looking for some feet. Decides to whip it into the box. And away from Riley Fellows. Up and Ray. Ball taken away from him by Mamich. It's Guilford again. Begin that build up. Some wonderful patience shown in the build up by those teams. Nearly pinched it there, did Will Milner. Not quite. Return to the style of play that we saw a lot from Guilford Young in that first half when they had the wind advantage. The game escalated into a slightly more frantic affair as St Patrick's College had the advantage of the wind in the second half. Ball's played in and it's got in behind Bevis there. He's holding his leg. The ball's gone in, flashed across the box. Could not get his foot on it there, the Guilford striker. It's back in though from Lagu and it's over the head of his teammate. And out for a goal kick. A real opportunity from here. This is Devine. I think he fired it in there for Mamich. Just in behind him. Mamich tried to flick up the heel to catch it. Couldn't capitalise. And the ball back in from Lagu. Over the head. Of Berezanski. And could not convert there, Guilford Young. Some Pats unable to find control of the ball there. But the throw in there now from Jed Schultz. He's come off the bench. Bevis versus Div Divin. Ball comes in. He's done enough there, the goalkeeper. Judged to have been fouled. Mr. Paul Smith there, the team manager, asking the ref for some respite. Looks like he's going to go and give some medical attention to one of our players on the pitch today. Here's Adam Bevis. Here, once that ball was played past him in that last sequence of play, he did pull up short and he appears to be in a large amount of pain, looking like cramp. As my old coach Peter Best used to say to me, if you've got cramp, it means you've stopped running. But I haven't seen that from Adam Bevis this afternoon. He's been running hard for his teammates, playing a pivotal role in central defence. As Mr Paul Smith trying to help him recover from this episode of cramp. Minutes are running off the clock as we surge towards a penalty shootout. Some instructions here being given just in the front of my commentary position by Marco Gazzoni to the captain, Austin Yost and Sam Berezanski, letting them know what he needs from them. There will be some significant injury time played. Bevis in a lot of pain down there. Smith trying to do his best to help. He appears to be in the calf. 
They're going to take him off the field, the captain. Not the most traditional way of, of removing a man from the field, but effective. And he'll be substituted and the game will get back underway. Imagine that'll add two to three minutes to the injury time for this first half of extra time, which is closing after five minutes. And there it is again, look at that lift. Bevis flexing for the crowd in front of him. And we're ready to get play underway again. Shara Power fires the ball in. Schultz wins it for Guilford Young. The trick was out of bounds. And the throw will be brought in by Campbell Young. Goes long down the line. Another great win from Schultz. The Redhead has the strong support of the Guilford crowd that has travelled. Successful netball team here just in front of my position. Cheering on the Guilford boys. Throw from Young, only as far as Lagu. He comes all the way down to the goalkeeper, Oscar Sharapau. He can take his time before picking the ball up. Divin putting on the pressure required. Matthew Owens, now official for today's action, has a glance at his watch. Did you think about blowing that whistle for the end of the first half? But Brown is away. Came on just in the second half. No foul from the... Oh, that's a late and a bad tackle there. Dear me. Terrible challenge from Jay Schultz. Brown up after the first challenge, wins the ball back, and here's Schultz. Late and takes the legs out from underneath him. And a real opportunity here for Steph Tantari. I imagine that if he could write the script for himself, this is the moment he would have imagined. 2-2. Extra time. Injury time in the first half. It's about 30 yards out. A wall of three men to beat. And he fires it in. It's curly to the left. Oh! Curls too far left. The shape was good as it started to move through the air. Just here the shape looked pretty good, but... Bounce short and away to the left. He'll rue that opportunity. Steph Tantari. But if the score remains the same after the second half of five minutes, oh, they're back in the box here, Guilford Young. And an offside flag. No, end of the first half of extra time. Only five minutes of extra time remaining. And if it's 2 2 at the end of that time. We will have penalty shootouts. You can follow all of that action live right here on Duff TV. As both players get themselves set up for that second half action, they'll be tired, weary, wind blown. But no, they have five minutes ahead of them. One last chance to score a decisive goal to claim the shield for their school and bragging rights throughout the state. We have the final five minutes of extra time action here in the 2021 Boys Senior First Soccer State Final. St. Patrick's College versus Guildford Young College at St. Patrick's College Soccer Grounds. Bit of feeling still in this contest right here in front of us. Been a good physical contest. Number of yellow cards given out today. Josh Divin thought he was away there. The flag's gone up from the sideline official. Craig Owen, father of Matthew Owens, who is our centre official today. The father and son team have done a tremendous job in officiating the action. Kept it a nice, clean game, a good pace, free flowing, a wonderful spectacle on this brilliant occasion. Credit must be given to the key staff at St Patrick's College, Mr Craig Boone, Mr Will Von Stiglitz, Mr Andrew Agardi, for their organisation of this event. End of the two other finals that were played today. 
Senior first girls netball, Guildford Young were triumphant. Senior first girls hockey, again Guildford Young were triumphant. The boys here seeking to make a trifecta of today's play with the win. But St Patrick's College will be doing everything in their power to prevent that from happening. You can start to see the boys are tired. A little less movement than we've seen, particularly throughout that second half when all was to be played for. Norton goes long. Good header there from Hughes Luke. One of the recipients of a yellow card today for his challenge on Steph Tantari. Good news is that Bevis is up and about and moving again on the bench for St Patrick's College. Does not appear to be motioning to move back on the field though. May get his chance to come on if we go to penalties. Throw comes in from Norton. And they're away here, Guildford. Chance for Mamich. Oh, he's stripped. Great job by Tom O'Byrne there. Max Rysick finds the feet of Toby Simeone. Tried to pass on to Will Milner, but was well defended by Guildford. Tom O'Byrne again. Can't win it. Berezianski tried to spread it wide. The ball ricocheting around in the midfield here. No one taking clean and clear possession. Campbell Young will see it out for a throw in. Two and a half minutes remain of gameplay before we enter the penalty shootout. Must be some cramp on the far side for a Guilford player there, just stretching it out. Making a substitution, Reid Beckett coming back on, was instrumental in the creation of the goal for St Patrick's College in the second half. Held up the ball beautifully before laying it off to Tantari, who was able to finish. <laughs> As Ziggy Go Webb comes back on again for Guilford Young. He's played a significant role for them today. And away by Campbell Young. Down the left wing. Great to see parents of both schools coming out to watch the game today. We much appreciate their support. Easy to be a football supporter on a day like today. Final, tremendous weather. Big occasion. What we don't see is that those people out here supporting today have been to those occasions early on a Saturday morning when the rain's been pouring down. So their continued support today is incredibly valued. Sliding in there, Reid Beckett wins the ball. But out over the touchline. Throwing for Schultz. Finds the feet of Berezanski. Tantari clears it, sends it firing into the supporters there. I love getting involved in the action. Another change here. Govinda Guring coming on. Some confusion here on the bench. Marco Gozoni. Giving some instructions to his charges, hoping to see them through these final 30 seconds. Headed one by Riley Fellows, who gave away the penalty for that goal in the second half by Guilford. Here's Tantari, some fancy foot movement. What has he got in these last 30 seconds of gameplay? The clock's winding down, opportunities are slim. The ball's come through there, nice touch back to Beckett from Simeone. Beckett lets loose from range. Doesn't significantly test the keeper, Josh Jones equal to it. He's going to kick this one long. Does not reach for his whistle there, the official. So there's still time left for both sides. He's going to win it. The ball comes through again from Tantari. Looking for Beckett, who's now put up with an injury as well. Both teams falling apart physically. Fellows. Simeone tried to find through for Beckett there. Tantari now down in the middle of the pitch and not moving. There's Tom O'Byrne. And oh, there's a whistle. Is that a free kick or is that full time? No, nope, he's just stopped it. Stop play. No final whistle yet. More cramp for St. Patrick's College. Now comes the team manager, Mr. Paul Smith, again to provide the medical treatment. This one in the calf again. So here's that latest movement. Simeone cut out there by... 
Ken Conn, who's had a great, great game today. Stretching it out there, Tantaro. Can't imagine the play will continue for long after the restart here. So it looks like, very much looking like this contest will reach the same conclusion as 2017. A penalty shootout. And Matthew Owens will drop the ball here and now the play to restart. Hear the wind being picked up by our microphones there, which has increased as the second half has drawn on. Referee <laughs> Matthew Owens drops the ball, picked up by the captain. He fires it long, knows he doesn't have much time. <clears throat> Comes into the box, headed away. Missed the ball there, did Tom O'Byrne, trying to win it. Had three nibbles at it, couldn't get it away. It's come to the feet of Mamic. Mamic through to Berezanski. Cleared by Max Rice. Perhaps the last opportunity of the game. The throw in comes. Opportunity for Yost to create. He's dangerous in these positions. We saw him on the penalty earlier. And goal kick. And there's the whistle. The full time score is 2 all in the 2021. Sardis, senior boys' first soccer final. And after 90 minutes of play, the teams cannot be separated, so we go to a penalty shootout. The last time this contest was decided by a penalty shootout was four years ago, in, 2020, in 2017, rather, at this exact venue with these same two teams. History repeating itself. And on that occasion, it was St. Patrick's College that reigned victorious in the state final. And indeed, that was a test for the new rules that year. Prior to that occasion, if there had been a draw at this stage of the game, then the state championship was shared. But new rules have been introduced in 2017, meaning that if it was uh, a draw at the end of full time, an extra time, that we would go to a penalty shootout. I had the great privilege of being the team manager for the St. Patrick's College team on the day back in 2017 when we won the penalty shootout here. Fond memories of that occasion. And both of these teams will be looking to replicate that glory. Now that lunchtime has finished here at St. Patrick's College and the students have gone back into their classes. The amount of student support out here for the college has diminished, but it's still strong. And Guildford Young have both of their teams here in support of their teams as well. The coaches now have the tricky responsibility of determining their five penalty takers. And it looks like St. Patrick's College have discerned theirs first. They head out to the middle. But the real pressure in these situations is on the goalkeepers for St. Patrick's College, Oscar Sharapow. He's already faced one penalty today. Got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. Josh Jones, the Guildford Young, who was busy in the second half and made a number of key saves. It does appear as though the real they will be using the, the Crow Patrick end of the ground here, next to the building works for the penalties, which is against the wind. So the wind is blowing furiously from left to right in your screen, down towards Mount Leslie Road. But the penalties will be taken here at the opposite end, at the Crow Patrick end. It looks as though our first penalty taker there, playing with the ball on your screen, will be Toby Simeone. Toby's played the majority of today in the role of striker for St. Patrick's College, wears the vaunted number 10, applies his trade at club level for Riverside Olympic in the NPL, highly talented striker, and he'll be the first to go one-on-one -on -one with Josh Jones. 
We would have seen your screens before a coin toss earlier between the two sides. St. Patrick's College has won. They've elected to shoot first. So here we are in our first of five penalty shots in this first phase. The team who scores the most out of these five shots will be declared the winner. Should they be still equal after those five penalty shots, then all subsequent shots will be taken on a... Here we go. Simeone puts it in the back of the net. Able to beat Josh Jones to give St. Patrick's College the number one. Number one nil lead. Just to finish my thought from earlier. It will be a sudden death scenario after those first five penalty, penalty shots are taken. And here it is again from Simeone. Big pressure. Josh Jones making himself look big. Tucks it into the exact spot that Austin Yost did when he took the equalising penalty in the second half. And one of the co-captains for Guildford Young College has now stepped up. You can hear the crowd putting the pressure on Berezanski. He's up against Sharapow. Oh, and he skied it over the bar. Berezanski, you can see him leaning back all the way in that shot. As a football coach, when you're taking a penalty, your advice to your players to always lean over the ball and watch the shape of Berezanski's body here. Leaning back, which means the ball is going to fly over the bar. You can see the St. Patrick's College supporters happy with that. Berezanski being consoled by his teammates, hanging his head in disappointment. Sharapow ecstatic. A save wasn't required from him in that situation. As the custodian for Guilford Young. Josh Jones against Arpen Ray. Oh, Arpen's hit the bar as well. One miss for each side in the first few shots. And Josh Jones not required on that occasion. Arpen, same deal, leaning back. Thought he must sneak it under the bar. If you watch that shape of the body again, leaning back when he takes the shot. Ricochets into the bar and out of danger for Guildford Young College. Now the striker, Josh Divin, scored in the first half to give Guildford the 1 0 lead against Oscar Sharapow. We've had two shots. Oh, and he nets it. Fantastic finish there. Very composed. Josh Divin makes no mistake and tucks that one in the way in the bottom right hand corner. Sends Oscar Sharapow the wrong way. And that is now one all after two shots. Josh Divin there, the little hand gesture. Don't know whether he's mimicking LeBron James or just letting everyone know to calm down. Reed Beckett step up and take the third penalty shot for St. Patrick's College. The pressure now on him as the scores are even. One apiece. The Guildford girls doing their best to put the pressure on Reed. Oh, great penalty from Reed Beckett. Tucks that one into the bottom right hand corner, identically from Josh Divin just moments before. Josh Jones guessed the right way, but wasn't able to keep out the shot from the striker. Here it is again. Reed Beckett, very composed. Inch perfect into the bottom right hand corner. Unfortunate for Josh Jones, who guessed the right way, nearly got a hand to it, giving the 2 1 lead to St. Patrick's College. The third shot here is for Austin Yost, who has already scored a penalty in this game. He won the penalty in the second half, bravely stood up to take it as captain. Has been huge for Guilford Young in the midfield all day. Running on some tired legs, but he only needs this one last burst of energy from the penalty spot for his side. Oh, he's tucked that into the bottom right hand corner. Giving a shout out to his supporters there, Austin Yost. Pleased with his efforts. Two in a row for Guilford Young. 
That good technique, strikes the ball well, perfectly into the bottom right-hand corner. It's gone that side for the last three shots. And these are the sort of the things that the keepers are thinking about. And what's the pattern? Where have they been shooting? Coaches, when they're talking to their players in these penalty situations, say, you make your mind up before you get to that penalty shot. If you're still making your mind up where you're going to kick it, and in the run-up to strike the ball, then you're in trouble. These players will have made up their minds well in advance. Fourth penalty shot for St. Patrick's College. And it's saved! A huge save there for Josh Jones. Max Rasik not able to convert for St. Patrick's College. And now a huge opportunity for Guildford College to take the lead in this penalty shootout. Max Rasik comes in. Ball's straight forward. Josh Jones, exceptional in goals. Getting down low to his right to stop that ball. Admittedly, he didn't have much work to do. Max Rasik will be disappointed in the strike. But he's going to hope that his teammate Oscar Sharapau can make a similarly powerful save. As Hughesloot, Harry Hughesloot comes up to take the fourth penalty for Guildford Young College. Score here will give them the lead. And he does! Goes straight forward, sent the keeper the wrong way, diving to his left. As calm and as cool as you like. The midfielder takes care of his business. Saw the keeper tending to the left. Just tucked it into the goal. And now the pressure is on Riley Fellows. Launceston United defender. Will step up to take the fifth and final penalty for St. Patrick's College. They trail 3-2. If Riley were not to convert here, the game will be finished. And Guildford Young will be crowned the state champions for the fourth year in a row. And he's missed! And Guildford Young are your state champions for 2021! Oh no! The whistle has been blown. The official has perceived potentially early movement from the line. That's the only imaginable situation here that he has seen Josh Jones come off his line before contact is made with the ball. Oh, and a yellow card now. A yellow card. So here we are. Here's the replay. This is Riley Fellows coming in. Watch the movement of the goalkeeper. So he's come off his line. It's perceived that he's come off the line early. The flag has gone up from the linesman. To say that before the ball has been struck, and Josh Jones came off his line. Oh, the controversy. The celebrations have been queued. We go take two to keep St. Patrick's College in the game. And he saved it! Josh Jones! Oh, the flag's gone up again, has it? Oh, you wouldn't read about it. He's been given a yellow card. Scenes at St. Patrick's College soccer grounds here. It has been judged that he's come off his line for the second time in a row before Riley Bellows, Bellows has shot. Oh, the drama. This is why we love football, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is again, and there's the flag. So Sam Day, he's the linesman there, watching the goalkeeper's movement. Sam Day has a judge for a second straight shot that Josh Jones has come off his line before Riley Fellows has made contact with the ball. Amazing scenes here. Amazing scenes. Now, for the third time, these two men will do duel. The first one, Riley Fellows missed. The second one, Josh Jones saved. How about the third, ladies and gentlemen? And it's a goal this time. The flag stays down. The ball's in the net. St. Patrick's College celebrates. On the third time of asking, Riley Fellows converts for his team. And here it is. Slips into the, the left-hand side of the net there. Had Josh Jones going left. And this is the final shot of the first phase. Each team has five shots each. At this stage, it is three all. 
and stepping up to take the kick, Matthias Collins. If he scores, they win. And he does! And there's no doubt this time, the referee cannot call it back. And Guildford Young College celebrate. After two false starts, they can now say they are the state premiers for 2021 in Sada Senior First Boys Soccer. Here is the final shot from Matthias Collins right into the bottom right-hand corner, as cool as you like. Congratulations to Guildford Young College. It has nearly been two and a half hours since the first ball was kicked and we finally have a winner. It took the very last kick of the first phase of the penalty shootout to separate these two teams who have battled hard all day. You can see the glory of victory for Guildford Young College, the agony of defeat for St Patrick's College, but a tremendous show of respect at the end of the day between these two sides, shaking hands, congratulating each other on a game well played and a victory well earned for Guildford Young College. Heroics in the goal there at the end for Josh Jones who seemingly on a number of occasions had won the state championship. But on that final time of asking, Riley Fellows was able to put the pressure on Matthias Collins, who had to convert. And convert he did against Oscar Sharapow to win this penalty shootout 4-3. They missed the first one to Guildford College, but scored the next four to ultimately win. 2-2 at the end of regular time. There were no further goals scored in extra time. The game finished at 2 all And Guildford Young College run out winners. And are the 2021 Sardis State Champions for Senior First Boys Football. You can see Marco Gozoni down there congratulating his players, thanking them for their efforts and in the proud and pleasing way that they have represented Guildford Young College. To my right, Des Shipper consoling his charges after a valiant effort and after nearly two and a half hours of football, he fell short of asking. But this is a young team for St. Patrick's College. Many of the players there will have the opportunity to go around again. But the premiers are Guildford Young College. You can see Adam Bevis there, the captain of St. Patrick's College, in amongst the Guildford Young players there, showing that sign of respect, which was shared by everyone for the fitting tribute the stirring tribute to Liam Monagle at the start of the game. Now it's time for the presentation of the trophy. And Craig Boone is going to be your master of events. Thank you very much too, Mr Craig Boone, for all his efforts in putting this day together and for putting on this wonderful occasion. Craig Boone will now be taking over the Master of Ceremonies to present this winning shield, which I believe will be presented by Mr. Stuart Ralph on behalf of Mr. Tony Daly, the Principal of St. Patrick's College. So thank you all for tuning in to the Duff TV live stream of the Sardis Senior First Boys Soccer State Final. I've been Casimir Douglas and it's been my great pleasure to call this game and congratulations again to Guildford Young College for taking all three sports out today before they head down the highway. Thanks for your attendance uh, today, Sardis Boys for Soccer Final. What a thrilling game that was. Well done to both teams. I'm now going to hand over to Mr Stuart Ralph, Deputy Principal at St Patrick's College, uh, to present the Shield, and we'll hear from both the captains. So congratulations to both teams. Here's Mr Stuart Ralph. Thanks, Craig. Uh, first of all, on behalf of St. Patrick's College, the host school this afternoon, to our St. Patrick's College students, an exceptional game, uh, to Guildford Young, uh, a great game and well fought out under tough conditions. And for our spectators here this afternoon, weren't disappointed in the exceptional talent on display. It's unfortunate that when we go to a penalty shootout, there needs to be a losing team. And uh, I'd like to congratulate St. Patrick's for the way, the humble way they were able to work through that today, but more importantly to our winners, Guildford Young College. On behalf of Sardis and uh, 
on behalf of our principal, Mr Tony Daly, who's been called away to a meeting late this afternoon, I'd like to congratulate both teams for what was on display today. I'd now invite the losing captain, Adam Bevis, to come forward and say a few words. Uh, firstly, just want to thank the refs. You did a good job today. Boys, we really pushed it this year. I'm proud of you all. We pushed it. Next year, you boys come back. We're going to fucking take it, all right? Um, to Guildford, you guys set the pinnacle again. Great stuff in Hobart. Even better here. Really good contest. End of the day, really good game. Um, cheers to Dez, Asha, Mr. Gardy, Smitty. Um, that's all I've got to say. Pass it over to Guildford, I guess. <laughs> now like to take this opportunity to invite Guildford Young College captains, Sam Berezinski and uh, Austin Yost to come forward and receive the SADA Soccer State Champions Shield for 2021. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say a big thanks to St Pat's, absolute ripper game, crazy. Just at the end, it's unfortunate that I'm one team has to win. Uh, Big thanks to the refs, amazing job. Thank you to my boys, awesome. Great fight, great ticker, love it. And I'd, and I'd just like to uh, make a quick mention to uh, Liam Monocle, uh, who was a massive part of our both schools and it's um, great that we can have a game after him. Um, gonna be honest, you know, unbelievable game between you blokes. I didn't expect that at all. Like towards that game, end there, it was, it was pretty much on. I was, I was pretty scared. I always thought to myself, we were gonna lose this, but it always happens, you can't help it, but you know, you guys put on a real good show for everyone here and the culture you guys have and the fans out there, it was unreal. I'd like to thank our boys, you know, our unreal game to come up here, you know. My 2-1 down and then come back in penalties, you know, unlucky it was great, but cheers, thank you. Well done and congratulations to Guildford. Um, I'd like to, and, and say thank you to the referees as well. Uh, I'd like to invite the referees and the players and all the people associated with the teams over for some lunch after we finish here. So we'll be over in this building behind you. So you go up the steps there and through the main entrance, we'll be upstairs in there. So please join us for some lunch and congratulations. Thanks to Guildford for coming up for the three sports today and congratulations on successes. Um, we'll obviously catch up with the soccer boys, but uh, after that we wish all of you a safe trip home. Thanks everyone. Inch. Some throw comes in, Guildford have won back possession. And a great tackle there from Steph Tanto to win back possession in the number nine. Can look to cross and does so. Gets it across that six yard box. Coming there was Max Reisig. Oh, there's a, an appeal for a penalty. Looked as though he's potentially tackled by Con. But referee Matthew Allen. Yost has provided a, a mixture of balls, both short and long. And this one, right in the middle, and the header there's the opportunity. Can Divin put it in? It's defended right off the line there by Bevis after Divin managed to get his left foot through it. And it's cut it out. Thought he might manage to find some time in his left foot there. Yost can get a shot. And there he is again, Fellows, with the header out. Comes to Rossi. The referee's not going to look kindly on that. He's had one yellow card already there. Hughes has already had a yellow. Oh, the action is erupting here. There was some. Both coach Des Shipper and coach Marco Gerzoni will be the envy of many coaches in Tasmania with the amount of young talent and potential they have on display today. Speaking of which, Max Rasik. Brilliant ball there for Toby Simeone. The flag has stayed down. He's clipped it over the top and it's hit the post. Would you believe it? Through one on one with the goalkeeper there, a brilliantly weighted ball from Norton and Divin again doing battle. Norton comes away as the victor this time. 
up and Ray for Tantari. Again, tries to find Sobe Simeone. He's drifted out to the right. The ball's back into the box. A chance for Beckett to turn and shoot. It's come to Tantari. He's put it in the net. It's a goal for St. Patrick's College. 2-1 they lead as Tantari heads out into the crowd to celebrate with his, with his schoolmates. The crowd here at St. Patrick's College. Tries to call that one into the back post. Oh, nearly came over the back there for Fred Lagu. He's not able to bring it under control. And it's away by Simeone. Tom O'Byrne battling there. And identical position to a few moments ago has come through to Lagu. Berezanski. Oh, and it's saved by Oscar Sharapow. Berezanski with an opportunity nearly identical to that. Of it's come out wide to Yost. <coughs> Showing some fancy footwork there, Yost. He's created some space on the left-hand side. He's around his defender in Fellows. Fellows saying that he got the ball. And the official is... What? Ooh. Not quite sure what the decision the official has made there. Oh, I think it is a penalty. Yes, he has. He's called a penalty. Remonstrations here from the St. Patrick's College boys. Here it is again. Some fancy footwork here. Yost. And here's Fellows. Seems to have got the ball there. Controversial decision. But that's the way the football goes. No VAR available for our official. As it stands, it is two goals for St. Patrick's College, one for Guildford Young College. The referee, Matthew Owens, has said that Riley Fellows has fouled the captain, Austin Yost, who's been outstanding today, in the box. And subsequently pointed to the penalty spot and Yost himself will take the kick and have a chance to equalise. We wait the official's whistle. Yost versus Sharapow. Oh, got a hand to a Sharapow, but it's a great goal and a fantastic finish there for Austin Yost. Deserved a goal for his efforts today. And Shades. Shades of 2017, we could be headed for extra time and potentially a few more penalty, shoot, penalty shots. And there it is, great finish by when they had the wind advantage. The game escalated into a slightly more frantic affair as St. Patrick's College had the advantage of the wind in the second half. Ball's played in and it's got in behind Bevis there. He's holding his leg. The ball's gone in, flashed across the box. Could not get his foot on it there, the Guildford striker. It's back in though from Lagu and it's over the head of his teammate. Blowing that whistle for the end of the first half. But Brown is away. Came on just in the second half. No foul from the... Oh, that's a late and a bad tackle there. Dear me. Terrible challenge. From Jay Schultz. Brown up after the first challenge, wins the ball back, and here's Schultz. Late and takes the legs out from underneath him. And a real opportunity here for Steph Tantari. I imagine that if he could write the script for himself, this is the moment he would have imagined. 2 2. Extra time. Injury time in the first half. It's about 30 yards out. A wall of three men to beat. And he fires it in, it's totally to the left! Oh! Curls too far left. The shape was good as it started to move through the air. Just here the shape looked pretty good, but... Bounce short. Yeah. By Max Rice, perhaps the last opportunity of the game. The throw in comes, opportunity for Yost to create. He's dangerous in these positions. We saw him on the penalty earlier. And goal kick, and there's the whistle. The full-time score is 2-0 in the 2021 Sardis Senior Boys First Soccer Final. And after 90 minutes of play, the teams cannot be separated. So we go to a penalty shootout on a... Here we go. Simeone puts it in the back of the net. Able to beat Josh Jones to give St. Patrick's College the number one. Number one nil lead. Pressure on Berezanski. He's up against Sharapow. Oh, and he skied it over the bar. Berezanski, you can see him leaning back all the way in that shot. As a football... Oh, up and hit the bar as well. 
one miss for each side in the first few shots. And Josh Jones not required on that occasion. Up and same deal, leaning Josh. back. Oh, and he nets it. Fantastic finish there. Very composed. Oh, great penalty from Reid Beckett. Tucks that one into the bottom right-hand corner, identically from Josh Divin just moments before. Josh Jones guessed the right way, but wasn't able to burst of energy from the penalty spot for his side. Oh, he's tucked that into the bottom right-hand corner. Giving a shout out to his supporters there, Austin Yost, well in advance. Fourth penalty shot for St. Patrick's College. And it's saved! A huge save there for Josh Jones. Max Rysig not able to convert for St. Patrick's College. And now a huge... Hugh Hugh Harry Hughesley comes up to take the fourth penalty for Guildford Young College. The score here will give them the lead. And he does! Goes straight forward. Sent the keeper the wrong way, diving to his left. As calm and as cool as you like. And he's missed! And Guilford Young are your state champions for 2021! Oh no! The whistle has been blown. The official has perceived potentially early movement from the line. And that's the only imaginable situation. The celebrations have been queued. We go take two to keep St. Patrick's College in the game. And he saved it! Josh Jones! Oh, the flag's gone up again, has it? Oh, you wouldn't read about it. He's been given a yellow card. Scenes at St. Patrick's College soccer grounds here. The third time these two men will do duel. The first one, Riley Fellows missed. The second one, Josh Jones saved. How about the third, ladies and gentlemen? And it's a goal this time. The flag stays down. The ball's in the net. St. Patrick's College celebrates. Three all. And stepping up to take the kick, Matthias Collins. If he scores, they win. And he does. And there's no doubt this time, the referee cannot call it back. And Guilford Young College celebrate. After two false starts, they can now say they are the state premiers for 2021 in Sada Senior First Boys Soccer. Here is the final shot from Matthias Collins right into the bottom right-hand corner. As cool as you like. Congratulations to Guildford Young College. It has nearly been two and a half hours since the first ball was kicked.